Excellent. So off we go. All right. Um, I just put in the chat the link to the minutes. I don't have a ton of stuff today because, I mean, we're obviously kind of in the the mode of bringing things to a point <laughs> as we approach the end of the year a bit. So, um, so in the in the minutes there, yeah, I'll put them. Right, if you want to join in on the minutes. Um, I had a couple of things. I guess I'll start, and obviously anybody can add anything they'd like. Um, and so I had a few things on events here. Um, the oh hey John. Um, the open source member summit submissions. Those are due, kind of like in the middle of January. I certainly plan on going, um, and I plan on submitting, but I don't know if others do as well, just so we're not, <laughs> so we're trying to coordinate efforts a little bit. Anybody else planning on submitting to this? I'm planning on going, okay. and I haven't decided on what to submit yet. Okay. Um, all right. Well, just kind of keep it on your keep it on your radar that I'm planning on submitting to. Are you planning to submit on Chaos? Yeah, definitely. Actually, if you, it's interesting if you take a look at um, kind of what the proposed topics are. One of the the absolute first topic is about um, community management and sustainability. So I mean, it's very much in line with what we're doing. So, um, but I'm not sure yet. Okay, um, that's that. Uh, just chaos con. Is there anything that needs to be known for that? Uh, registrations are filling up. I okay. keep getting registrations every day. A few come in. So if you don't have a ticket yet, please go do it now, like okay. right now. <laughs> um, the, the schedule has been published. We have two speakers, three speakers, four speakers uh, that have not responded yet last I've seen. Okay. Yeah, I know Michael Downey, I think he's out for a couple of weeks. Um, so I can ping him again, uh, but hopefully he's still planning on coming. But yeah, yeah, let me look at the sheet and see who, there should only be a couple who hasn't responded, right, George, Georg? Like, I think there are four. Okay, yeah. there's more than a couple. Yeah, two in yeah. the regular sessions and two lightning talks. Okay. Yeah, let me confirm. And uh, I think I gave him a deadline of last Friday, but. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Elaine. Yep. Um, and thanks for doing the schedule. I think that was Georg, you, and Sala. I think you had helped a lot in that regard. Kevin, were you helping in that one? Or? Nope, not me. But you were okay. correct with the other two. Okay. So thanks a lot for doing that. Yeah, you're welcome. Anything else, ChaosCon? All, all speaker things and stickers and all that have been ordered. <laughs> they are en route. Excellent. So, yeah. Otherwise, um, um, at some point, we need to figure out how to do name tags. Uh, okay. For one. And those small things that, but we can all figure that out in January. Okay. Yeah, those are, I think those are like name tags. I think I was just going to bring a hello, my name is. Yeah, yeah. that's the easiest thing to do, I think. <laughs> it's some Sharpies. Yep. So. Okay. All right. Well, great. It sounds like that's moving along just really, really well. Have you heard from um, Keynote, Georg? Okay. I have not. Okay. So I reached out to Deb. I think I CC'd you. You did. I just wondered if you had heard back anything. 
I did not. And okay. then our other keynote, Michael, is also. Um, I know he had, um, he was traveling last week. I don't okay. know what he's doing this week. Okay, cool. Um, all right, great. Thank you. Um, anything else on uh, events? I know Open Compliance Summit was just happening or is happening today, yesterday. Uh, Sean is over there and I think getting some good feedback on a lot of risk metrics. So that's been pretty cool. Um, I actually think some of the, from what I understand, some of the risk metrics were actually included in Jim Zemlin's keynote at the Open Compliance Summit as well. So pretty happy. Oh, cool. Yeah, pretty happy to continue to see those things show up in, in the keynotes. Um, I haven't seen the keynote. I, these are just based on emails kind of um, coming along. So um, any other thing on events? FOSDEM, sustain, anything like that? No, I look forward to seeing you all in January. Right, me too. All right, cool. Um, the metrics release, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, I think I've been tasked with doing the release notes. And so this is just gonna be a single, I think it's just gonna be a single document for the, this release coming up in January, at the end of January. And this release, correct me if I'm wrong, because I wasn't at the meeting where this was decided, but what's basically on the release notes is mentions of moving to the new template, mentions of any fundamental changes that may have occurred on a metric that was released in the first release, um, any new metrics that are coming forward, and in particular, the common working group had identified a restructure of focus areas. Is that about right? Yeah, if you go down in the I minutes, yep. we have yep, uh, in <laughs> highlighted in yellow because super important section. Okay. Um, and I think you added an item that we did not have here, new metrics. What do you think the best way for that document to appear is? Is it just part of the PDF, do you think? Because I mean, it's not gonna be a giant thing, right? I, I think we had discussed having it as a second page on the website release, uh, okay. but then for the, uh, for the PDF version, uh -huh. I think we probably have to merge them together. Okay. So when you say a second site, if I go to chaos.community under metrics, would it be I, like a... Currently there's just one metrics button. Yeah. For, uh, I think what we had discussed was actually having a, uh, a drop down with three... Okay. Uh, with three... Uh, choices. Choices, right. So one is going to be... Right now, one is going to be the current release, and then, mm -hmm. then the other one is going to be the, the pending release. Okay. Uh, and then we were going to have a release notes uh, page as well. Okay. And then I think the, uh, that release notes page, when, when the new release gets made, the release yep. notes page becomes the, uh, also that, that document that kind of holds the archive of previous releases. Okay, Sala, you have a question? Uh, yeah, so uh, it's common when, when uh, generating static sites, um, even if you're using a platform like WordPress, it's common that if it's coming from Markdown uh, on a repo, uh, especially if it's open source, that there would be a backlink to the source. So, so like people are able to quickly um, uh, make a PR to suggest a change uh, being part of, you know, the workflow um, today that, that kind of closes the, uh, it eliminates a lot of issues, people filing, trying to actually make a very concrete contribution uh, in a very particular spot. And it gives the um, authors of the project, um, you know, complete control over whether or not they want to accept something um, or if there needs to be discussion. So that workflow just separates all that work of trying to triage issues um, and just keeps editorial related 
uh, feedback and improvements. Um, is there any chance we can have that feature, like uh, view on GitHub or make a, you know, just a link that opens the relevant markdown? Is this related to the release, Sala? Uh, yeah, because- Or a workflow in general. Well, well, I mean, if you have those part of, if the release has that kind of mechanism in the rendering, uh, then you don't have to change how you go about uh, putting that content on WordPress. So, so it kind of, if we, if we need to make a subtle change somewhere, uh, it, it, we'd rather do it uh, before the release is released yep. uh, than, than when it is released and potentially changes uh, something unexpected. Um, it being a regular release. So, so yeah. as far as the uh, as far as the the metrics detail pages go, we actually in the in the past release we did do that. So we we link to an issue that was created specifically for that uh, that detail page, and then I believe we also link to the uh, the GitHub uh, Markdown page that, that existed on. Am I am I am I remembering that correctly, Georg? Yeah, during the review process. And I think what Sala is talking about is after we release it to continue to have a link back to the source. Yeah, it, it's usually the static site generator when it's picking, pulling in the markdown that it's actually saying, okay, the metadata for that markdown is that it originated in this particular Git source. Yeah. Um, and, and then the renderer, uh, sees that metadata and puts the, okay, edit on GitHub button. So it's, it's more like a, an so auto. We can do that. There are, what I'm thinking right now, just to give you background. Right now, what we do is we freeze the repositories, the working group repositories. We create release tags. And then in WordPress, we pull in the release tag version of the markdown pages. The way to, the, there, for one, that means we do not update the pages. So even if you go back to the original markdown and update the master branch, the release tag does not change. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, that's that's fine. It's it's a, to make a contribution for next release at this point, right? Yeah. So then, if we link to that tagged version of the metric, um, we would have that link. There are two ways we can do that. One is we include that information on the WordPress page, or we include it in the markdown. Yeah, there, there's an alternative though. Uh, what, what, what we, what we uh, do in, in packages on NPM is that we say there's always a latest version, right? Um, and, and so yes, you tag it and you tag that for, for the usual reasons why you might want to go back. But there's only one live version um, that is considered, um, you know, the a version that you want to improve before the next one. Um, and, and, and you also make that uh, a particular branch, as in if you change anything in that branch, it changes the live thing, um, but it doesn't contribute to the tag for which that branch had been at when it was released. Uh, it contributes towards the next tag. So I think that's the master branch. Yeah, you know, um, I, I don't know if you want to go directly from master or not, so I, I didn't make that uh, particular uh, uh, claim. But but here we're saying that this branch that will be contributed to words, since it's a process of editorial, probably to fix a typo, then you would assume that, okay, this lands after the uh, pull request goes through the um, usual process, uh, it being a a correction to the live content, not to the content that was tagged initially. Okay, so we can, instead of linking to the tagged version of the markdown, we can link to the master branch version. Now what happens when we change the file name? Then we're gonna get a 404 not found error. 
I, I suppose we were talking about future edits for the next release. Those happen on a separate branch, like on the develop branch, if you're doing, using- On the master branch. No. This all happens on the master branch. I, I mean, the master branch is, is what you want to keep on your site. So any changes you do there, change your site. But if you're going to be, um, so, so sorry, why would you change the file name? Um, just because I, I didn't, I missed that context. So, so we, we did that, for example, uh, because we clarified the um, documentation. Metrics okay. themselves are pretty dynamic, right? The, the yeah. names can change, the, the files can change pretty drastically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are staging edits, though. We're editing for next release, and, and they should really not be happening on master. If we're using that workflow where master is what is live, um, then, you know, I don't want to call it master, but most people keep it as master. But what you're doing to revise master in the next release happens on a secondary branch. They used to call it develop. Um, and uh, now some call it staging when it's web related. Um, and, and it's basically like... I would say, I, I, think one of the, I think one of the issues we have here is that the, the GitHub repositories for these working groups are... Uh, they're not primarily there to create output to the website. They're, they're primarily there to just for uh, a workspace, right? So uh, the website just kind of grabs a snapshot of them at a time. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and it's grabbing a snapshot from different repositories as so, well. So we can say this is a longer term discussion we don't have to raise right now because clearly there will be changes if something like that was to be uh, explored. Um, so let's aim for V3. So <laughs> maybe one, maybe, I mean, I, I think these are good discussions. Maybe the, instead of like try, trying to do everything all at once, maybe a first recommendation would be on the, the release that's occurring January 3rd or yeah, January 30th is for that release to provide at least a, a backlink to the, to the repository where this work is occurring so that people who want to participate in modifying any of the metrics or even propose new metrics know where that, that work is occurring. I think the, the, the release notes page on the website would be a good place for that. Okay. So we could have links to the previous releases. We can have the, the release notes for this release, and then we could have the connection back to, do you want to work on these it, specific yeah. metrics? Because uh, it feels like ultimately, Sala, what you're trying to do is provide um, people the ability to take what is otherwise static content on the web that you can't really contribute to and provide people the, a clear opportunity to be able to participate in this work or a clearer opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, it minimize the, the additional work it takes to maintain um, transposition of content to yeah. the workflow uh, if it's already being dynamically picked up by the back end of the WordPress yeah. um, generator or, or, you know. Yeah, so we don't have such a generator. And what we did last release, and maybe, maybe there's already, we can continue doing that, is when you go to the metrics release page in each working group, and, and we do have the repository linked, not within each metric, but just within the metrics page, the list of metrics. So <coughs> if you contribute to any of those, you can go to the repository. Is that from a workflow clear enough to know where to go to edit? I believe so. Um, maybe what would help to, as a small step for this release is that next to each metric in, metric in this page, you know, where the table has two columns, yep. there would be just a click, like, go to the markdown file. I, see, I, I know it's not as obvious, but figuring out which markdown file uh, you want to reference when you're trying to bring the attention of, um, you know, the project about something in a particular place they read, um, having that link that eliminates them having to search through uh, a conventional structure of, of, of a project that is already accustomed to it, um, it's hard for, for someone not in the project to um, adapt to the structure that we take for granted as people inside the project 
um, who, who get to learn it. Like in my case, I'm learning it very, very slow. Um, so, so, so that's the whole idea is that if people yeah. will give us feedback and it's too hard for them to even know how to not sound confusing, they will just not give the feedback, it's easier. You see what I mean? I do. Yeah. Um, why don't we, let's, um, here, I have a proposal then. I mean, I, I like the idea, right, of trying to, trying to lower, lower the barriers by which people can contribute, right? Yeah. And if we can take them directly where they need to be, that's great. Yeah. Um, so maybe we ha our next meeting is on the 7th of January because of the holidays and stuff like that. I mean, and maybe Kevin, like over the course of January, we could take a look at what adding a third column would look like. We we add uh, we add actually a third and the fourth column to that during the release. Uh -huh. So what he's describing, we're actually going to be doing for the release anyway. Oh, okay. So we could just kind of uh, see how that looks and feels. All right, so the the question, and I think the question he's asking is is if we want to keep that. Yeah. Past the release, right? Am yeah. I? Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, we can. Okay. At that point, we can we can certainly talk about it. Okay. Uh, cool. Thank you, Sal. Thank you. Um, there was on the spreadsheet. I'm kind of just going down the list here. So on the spreadsheet itself, there was a recommendation. I forget what working group it came out of that we add another column to this spreadsheet, which is about target release. Because right now we have things can be marked as um, like in progress or something like that. I'm not actually looking at the spreadsheet. I suppose I should. Um, but like in progress, yeah, we have in progress, you know, the yellow row. But it might provide a little clarity, like in progress for the the 15th version <laughs> like like this is a really long arc we don't really plan on versus in progress for version two you know what i mean or this the the january release so okay thanks kevin um so anyway i don't know what people think of that i thought it was a nice suggestion it just kind of helps frame what in progress means a little bit okay Seems like everybody's kind of okay with that. I'll, I'll just go through and add that. Um, could I ask a question about the template column? Is there any chance we would repurpose this column? Like, is there a chance someone would be saying, okay, the template of an in-progress spec is intentionally using an old template? No, that, that column mostly just showed up. I think I had put it in a long time ago because I was just trying to track what I had changed. You know what I mean? So I didn't just yeah. to help myself largely. Yeah. Do we want to um, cannibalize this? You know, like we just, could. Yeah. I mean, it, it yeah. And, and if we ever, if we ever get a third template version, we can just add that column back in. Okay. The in the notes, say, okay, I, I did not forget the template. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> that, that would be fine because I, I think at this point we're we're largely updated, so that'd be fine. Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, I'll go ahead and make that change. I don't know if somebody got that in the notes. Um, that will be this. Okay. Um, metrics. So I went through the um, I went through the spreadsheet from what I could understand. So these are metrics in development. So everything that's purple at the moment in there, I've marked as ready for release. And the reason I marked them all ready for release is because actually every metric changed this round. Either it was a new metric, it's ready for release, or it was updated to the new template, meaning it's ready for release. So I just marked all of them as ready for release. All right. The, what you're seeing here is me going through the spreadsheet trying to identify, so for example, documentation accessibility, the conversation that's going on right now out of DNI. I think that's a metric that's still in development. You could correct me if I'm wrong. Um, same with, with risk, there's one, same with evolution, there were two, and so on and so forth. So I don't know, this is mostly just to kind of put these on people's radar. But the hope is, is these can move forward. They're, they're going to have to move forward asynchronously. Um, we don't have to solve these now. 
Um, but if you're part of, say, DNI and bringing forward documentation accessibility, I do encourage you to just kind of continue to push that asynchronously. Um, and same for the rest of the working group. So I don't know if anybody has a comment on there. That was just mostly a visibility issue that I'm trying to provide here. No, it's great to see the current places that the working groups are making push. Yep, and th this this would be it, I'm guessing, right? I mean, this will be these whatever two, four, five that we have here. This will call an end to this to this version. So. Um, again, for the working groups, it's there is no set number of metrics that need to be released. So, I mean, if um, if I'll just because I know documentation accessibility is being talked about right now, um, if that just doesn't hit a form that you're comfortable with, there's, there's that's okay. It's totally okay, and this can hold off until the next um, the next release that would occur. You know six months in the future after that. So don't don't feel that there's any pressure um, to get these done. I think doing the quality work is far more important than doing rushed work. And I'm not saying you're rushing through it. I'm just, I, I don't wanna give anybody a sense that you, you these absolutely must, because we've, we've really done great, I think, to this point in terms of thinking. I feel I feel like feedback is needed. Don't worry, we're, we we got it. Like we 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 kind of looked at it when we were working, and and yeah, like there are places where obviously there are improvements. Um, you know, yep. um, it, it, it's good to um, you know um, give this particular topic, in my opinion, yep. um, um, a fair uh, shake because it's it's mystical to a lot of people. So, right? Yeah, I highly encourage it, and. Like it, 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 even if it's not like perfectly polished for this this release that's occurring in January, that's okay. I mean, we can always go back. You, it can be released, and we can go back and revisit kind of any of the rough edges. Down yeah. the road. Um, so from yeah. an, from a strategy point of view, yeah. Um, for the documentation accessibility, uh, just to give you a background, we've been working on this for almost a year. On and, on. and we had workshops on it at the summit and chaos con so it there's a lot of work in it it's we just reframed a little bit last week and so i i'm someone who likes to put closure to things and i understand that it's not perfect but should we try to get it in a better state before taking it into the release should be take it into the candidates and then throw it out um, if feedback is negative or I mean so, personally I, I, I took a look at it and I you know I left some feedback um, I, I thought it looked great so I mean I, I like the premise of it I'd love to see it move forward. And we do also, kind of to your point, Georg, we have the January period for further comment as well. Yeah. So and we, can't, we can always remove it if we can't get it done during that. Yeah, if it's, just, if it's feeling off in January yeah. or something like that. Sala, what's up? Uh, yeah, so so the, the, only, the only thing I couldn't wrap my head around because, you know, we actually like I was actually thinking of this as everybody else was actually doing work. Uh, like I tried to solve accessibility problems because you know I'm driven to not uh, you know um, always complain about what I you know I, I struggle with, uh, and and I'm sure other people have documentation accessibility. But yesterday it, there was a like rude awakening moment. Because we were looking at, okay, so how do you measure if documentation is accessible if documentation itself is written in Markdown that is in a repo and Markdown has no like concept of accessibility, but it depends how your documentation is presented. Um, so, so the style of writing can be disabling. You know, you could confuse someone who tends to, you know, suffer with the literal inferred uh, conventions. Um, I'm, I'm that person, by the way. And that's why I usually do the up, upside down smiley face. Um, and, you know, that is something, yes, you definitely can measure on Markdown. But there's no tool that will tell you 
this particular statement is kind of like confusing to some people that most people don't even realize that it is. Um, but, but other than that, any forms of accessibility fall back to whether or not GitHub in 90% of the times is accessible. And to be entirely honest, I'm not sure screen readers or whatever, like this is not my, you know, kind of accessibility. But for me, like I have a separate screen because GitHub has so much high contrast, like high uh, uh, stimulation. I cannot have that on the screen where I write code. Um, and I have that screen and, you know, I don't have to look at it unless I need to look at it and it's painful. Um, so how do you measure these, right? So I think you can, I mean, I think currently the metric I'll put it in the chat here just for folks, but I think the metric captures this. Um, I think maybe yeah, I think my solid, solid, sorry if I, mm -hmm. if I misrepresent you. I think the point Solid was making is this was something we discussed yesterday. So you yeah. were sharing it with the group. Okay, gotcha. And we made sure as we built out the metric that it's technology neutral. Yeah, I was actually going to say, well, that's where I was going. So your data collection strategies appear very technology neutral, um, mm -hmm. at least in my mind when I read them. I think my one, my one recommendation through the implementation and data collection strategy is um, sometimes it seemed like the questions that could be asked in the data collection strategies um, it was hard for me to, to categorize them. So in the implementation, you say you can run like a survey or you can run, you can look for certain criteria. And it was hard for me to know in the data collection strategies, which of those were survey items, which might be items that I as a person might have to personally go out and collect. Does that make sense? So if, I, if I'm looking at this, if I'm looking at the bottom of page one, right now you say a person goes through, so implementation, a person goes through the document chase and documentation checks off the criteria listed below. Is I think that, you need to remove the things here at the top because it's duplicating what's at the bottom. And okay. you're right, the link between what's at the top and what's at the bottom is not clear. Yeah, that's. I was just getting lost in that a little bit. I wasn't sure what I was supposed to, but if you remove it, then, <laughs> then I... I have no initial reference, which is fine. Um, and then I can just take a look at, at what you propose as the data collection strategies. So okay. there is no implementation section, if I'm not mistaken, from what I'm seeing here? Are, are we saying this section is part of the data collection strategy? Yeah, so data collection is a subheading under implementation. OK, yeah, yeah but I mean, there's no like prelim, um, um, you know. There doesn't, there doesn't have to be. OK, yeah, yeah. Um, More words is not always better. While we're here, just, just to clarify, uh, we're keeping the comment segment at the end of the... I, I know this is not the time for this. That's just a, a, a that's okay. question. At the bottom, it says this metric seems to be too complex, and then we have, like, rough notes. That um, is not part of the metric. So, so yeah, that'll be pulled out. Yeah, the PR should not have that kind of thing in the future. Uh, It'll stop part. right at the end of resources. Yeah, learning moment for me. Thank you. Yep. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Um, so um, anyway, if you're if you're part of those working groups, just kind of know that we're going to have to put closure to these at some point. Um, I copied the timeline from below. So um, there it is. Um, I, the, I mean, it just is what it is, the timeline. I'm back in the Chaos Weekly minutes. I'm at the bottom of page whatever, I suppose we should put page numbers on here. Um, community reports, I don't know if there's anything that that Georg you want to bring up. Sean's not here, so. Um, so we had a meeting with the Jenkins X um, community manager, Kara, last week. Mm -hmm. And we talked through the metrics um, that we were able to produce from Cauldron. And it's on my to do to deploy a traditional Grimoire Lab instance to get at some additional metrics. And we uh, did, decided to get 
the risk metrics from Augur because Augur has the um, more complete uh, implementation of risk metrics. Um, okay. Um, I can tell you I just, I don't know, is Matt on right now? He's not. I, okay. Um, I just talked with them. They had, um, they'd spun up an instance for this, for Jenkins X, and he's going to work to make it public, and then you can just get the data off that. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. And then I don't know where Zephyr is because uh, Sean was not at that meeting because he was traveling. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I'll, I think we'll have to get an update. I'll probably just get kind of an informal update from Sean. He was meeting with Kate because they were out in Japan yep. at the Open Compliance Summit. So, okay. Um, thank you, Georg. Um, workflow, I see this is there. So I don't know who added that. That was me and I was distracted. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, so, so I was just talking about, um, um, yeah, like uh, the suggestion uh, tool in GitHub, basically. Yeah. Um, it, it's very, very helpful when your intent and the action that follows from that intent are um, one step. You know, uh, it, it eliminates the need for clarification uh, because if, if there's any chance for clarification, I'll be it. I'll be like, do you guys mean this? Um, and, and by I, I mean like the collective I. <laughs> but uh, me more frequently um, uh, due to the upside down thing. So um, can we, can we um, try to um, consider um, using suggestions? Is that something everybody willing to I, I mean, they, they've stabilized on GitHub. Uh, they're a learning curve, um, but but you know they keep adding features to it because it really is helpful. It avoids um, you know talking about what your intent and the outcome should look like, um, you know, which tends to be hard to uh, relate sometimes. So is this? Um, I um, guess I'm not familiar with GitHub suggestions. Yeah. So, I've never used it before either. Yeah, so so it's it's when you click on the plus and then that opens that comment thing. If you do a uh, three back ticks and write suggestion, it's basically starting a committable uh, edit that um, that that relates to that particular line. So if you if you want to change a click on the plus and then three what? Three. Like three back ticks, like a fenced code block, like you know how you do code blocks and and yeah. markdown. Yeah. So, uh, so three back ticks to open the block, followed by the word suggestion, and that tells uh, GitHub that this is um, code that is meant to replace starting from that line, um, and and it will be adding lines if you go beyond a single line in that particular block. So, so let's say I wanted to add a line. I would click the plus button on the line before it. Yep. Um, copy literally, like a, as is, the line, and followed by a new line. I believe this, this will say whatever is on the newer lines is an addition. I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. We have to try it out. Um, but at the very least, if you're making line suggestions, uh, which is the normal workflow for markdown, um, then, then this really helps because you don't have to describe the change um, and someone else has to do a commit with that change. All you're doing is you're in the PR UI itself, I see. right? Um, the, and, and when, when the, re yeah, the review, when it's, when it's all good, you pick which of these commits. Um, and then I believe, um, we might run into some growing pains on how to uh, sign off and stuff like that because these are uh, internally yep. uh, generated. Uh, so you're, you're suggesting to use this instead of a comment below yeah. the line that yeah. says, could you please change this to X, Y, Z? 
Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that the intent is 100% clear and actionable without any intervention. I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah, I mean, I can give that a shot. So, and so this is, these are suggestions, it's basically like a, a, a Word document suggestion or a, yeah. a Google Doc suggestion. It's just you doing it in GitHub. In, yeah, yeah. Down there. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I feel it's very helpful. Um, hopefully others will grow to like it too, so. Okay, no, that's great. That's, I, I have no problem with that. Thank you for showing us, Sala. I'm yeah. happy to try it out and yeah. learn I'm just lazy, so I'm off. Oh, yeah, no, actually, when I, when I, I think this is great because when I co-author <laughs> papers with people, sometimes trying to understand their comment is more difficult than if I just see the change <laughs> and then yeah. we can talk so, about it. Okay. Yeah, all right, that's. Uh, okay, cool, thank, thank you, so Sala. That's good. All right. Um, anybody else on things here? All right. Um, great. All right. Well, um, if people are taking a break, I hope you have a great break. Um, looks like we'll start seeing everybody kind of around the, f the new year, right? So I know this meeting's not meeting for a while. So um, last call. Mm, Otherwise, to see ya. what's that? I have so much more time over the holidays because I'm doing a Slack week and now you're not meeting. So it's kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we got to find a break somewhere for us. <laughs> Manta, you and I, we can, we can write a blog post. We, yeah. a <laughs> we, we do need to do that. That is the thing we need to do, yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of work that can be done. It just won't occur in these Zoom channels. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, cool. Well, thanks, everybody, and enjoy your break if you happen to have one. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Bye. Okay, see you later. Later.